Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Tuesday, March 20th, 2018, episode 44. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yes, maybe a little lulls. And we definitely, we, we, we have some lulls selected for you today. You can get show notes at istate.tv slash H044, which is linked in the video description, whether you're listening or watching on YouTube or Facebook. And today's show is titled Walmart Farm Drone Cartel. On today's episode of Headlines, you may have missed Walmarting the Farm, Google Pirates of Raleigh, Afrin is the new Alamo, Homer Simpson gets arrested. Yes, yes, that's gonna be your that's gonna be your lulls of the day clue. And more. And be sure you you share this show, otherwise you're a freaking commie. And now Ladies and gentlemen, here are your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. Walmart patents intelligent drone farmers. So this story, I'm, I'm putting this story, it's, it's kind of both an example of dystopian tech as well as liberty tech. There's elements to this story that are disconcerting and then there's elements to this story that I think are are hopeful from a liberty perspective well for those of us who embrace technology I know I have a friend Mitch who regularly listens to the shows <laughs> you're not gonna agree with me buddy but uh <laughs> I understand if we could go back to uh hunter gather world honestly I would not complain but be that as it may uh, this is an example of how an entity that is not fundamentally in favor of a true free market or authentic liberty can be an unwitting contributor to the advancement of a free market to the advancement of authentic liberty. So the story is that Walmart is developing a type of drone that's capable of pollinating plants, managing farms, planting seeds, distributing fertilizer to do really, really advanced type of stuff. And uh, the drone farmers are being developed and patented by Walmart. And here's the dystopian element to this. So so I, I'm not stupid. I recognize that this is a bid to create an exclusive access, access to Walmartians, to technology that enables Walmart to create its own cheap produce that others would not be able to compete with because they lack access to the technology that Walmart is developing. And of course, yeah, yeah, that part's disturbing. That's the dystopian part. That's the part, uh, you know, they're going to use the IPs to claim exclusivity for a technology, which I mean, IP, as, 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 as anybody who listens to me to any degree, uh, to any length of time, realizes that IP is, uh, uh, well, it's 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 anathema to everything that I stand for. I consider it anti-progressive, anti-human, and fundamentally at odds with uh, true free markets, with whatever you want to call authentic liberty. But the technology that Walmart is developing is useful, and it can also be pirated. I'm not saying that people should do this. I'm just saying I'm just. You know, this, this show is for purely entertainment purposes. But it can be pirated and co-opted by liberty market entrepreneurs to help them develop their own network of locally focused, locally scaled farms. And I think that it's an exciting development in human history to be able to utilize machines to manage our farming more efficiently with less cost and less human labor. It is, however... Also, a danger to human history to have that type of technology exclusively in the hands of a few large-scale enterprises that see no reason whatsoever to encourage the development of local self-sustainability and self-reliance. I mean, one of my one of my underlying principles is wherever possible, always choose 
Wow, can I can I say always choose? I'll say wherever possible, choose the smallest scale available. Don't make yourself dependent on large scale systems. Be as especially coercive enterprise systems, but even market large scale systems because there's a also a good chance that the market large scale system is is pretty much embed with the coercive enterprise. But despite their efforts to claim MAPs with the backing of the guns of the coercive enterprise, the open source pirates will deliver, I believe. And they'll deliver these new technologies to those who reject a world that is dependent on large scale systems controlled by the few. I do see these, I already see, you, you see it a lot in, you know, the open source uh, uh, software uh, on the interwebs today. And I have no doubt that uh, if they don't exist, that they soon will. I'm, I'm sure that they do exist, uh, the, that there are the, the, you know, there's the crypto anarchists out there, for instance, and I'm sure some of them are working diligently on creating open source uh, technologies that will undermine the efforts by the few to control the technology of the many through the oppressive regimen of IP. I'm going to get to another lovely story. It's a truly beautiful story. Raleigh, Raleigh, I don't know how you say that. How do you say Raleigh, North Carolina? Raleigh cops demand Google hands over private data of anyone near crime scenes. This is fine. Everything's fine. I'm fine. That's, that's kind of the narrative that you got to go with at this point if you want to keep your sanity. But you know what? I'm I'm not bothered. My face. You can't see my face right now, but my face. Is it bothered? Mm -mm, not bothered. It seems that the road pirates of Riley, North Carolina, would like to extend their pirate lanes to the digital universe. So they're demanding that Google share with them any and all data from users that are in proximity to a crime scene. That seems reasonable, right? I mean, you're near a crime scene, you know? Oh, dude. Look at my phone. Get all my personal information. That makes sense. The jurisdiction for the search warrant of your private information, again, is, is only that you happen to be in close proximity to a crime scene. You're not a suspect. You're not a known associate of a suspect. You're not even a known witness. You're simply in close proximity to the place where a crime took place. And it's, it's, it's unclear whether the road and... And now Google Pirates of Riley, North Carolina, will be successful in finding the right judges to use ghosts in the language to find some, I'm going to put this in quotes, justification for a violation of the Fourth Amendment. In case you forget, that's the one that supposedly protects, quote unquote, citizens from unreasonable search and seizure. But whether they find the judges that will find the ghosts to to allow them to do this or not, the fact that people who have been given the power of life and death over you in Riley, the people who are authorized to use deadly force against you if they determine that their lives are threatened, and don't worry, they'll do a self-examination to determine whether it was actually a legitimate use of force because they felt threatened. And I'm sure it's going to be fair and impartial. Um, if, if these are the folks that have this type of power, if they think it's reasonable for them to get your personal information merely because you happen to be in close proximity to a crime scene, I think it reveals the true authoritarian and out of control nature of whoever is running the road pirate and now the the Google Pirate Department of Raleigh, North Carolina. And if you live in Raleigh and you're not demanding that whoever is behind this decision to attempt to make anyone and everyone suspects of crimes, then you have become extremely inured to your cages. And I don't know, I think that some might even say that uh, a Mustock Holmes syndrome is... Yeah, it's uh, super strong with you. You might want to see a doctor about that. Kurds to convert to guerrilla war strategy against the Turk Reich. Sometimes success is your greatest enemy. Uh, take, for instance, the success of the Mexicans in taking the Alamo. And it turned into a rally cry for Texans that eventually led to the independence of Texas from Mexico. And now 
there might be a new Alamo, and this one is in Syria, and that Alamo might be called Afrin. After the fall of Afrin in northern Syria, which was a part of Rahava, and for those of you who are who, are, who dare dream of governance models outside of the course of enterprise model, I I I I I. I I urge you to pay attention to the experiment going on in Rahava. But after the fall of Afrin, it seems that the Kurds are coming together with new alliances being formed that had previously been denied. And the Kurds, they're now coming together in force and with renewed determination to exact revenge for the atrocities of Afrin committed by the Turk Reich. One Kurdish general has vowed that uh, the fight against the Turk Reich is not over, not even in Afrin itself, as the Kurds will now switch from a direct confrontational war strategy to a guerrilla war strategy. And while this particular general in the, in the story that we're covering here is only talking about Afrin, others have already hinted that the guerrilla war will be taken to the Turk Reich itself with military and allies being targeted. And... <laughs> I, I'm gonna. Th this next part is gonna be said with extreme sarcasm, and maybe you'll figure out what the sarcasm is. The success of the Turk Reich in taking Afrin in, after 52 days, facing an enemy that had far less technical capacity and zero air support, may lead to a greater problem that will cause the Turk Reich far more militarily and economically than Afrin could ever have caused is if if left to its its own devices so so i i i welcome the turk reich suffering a consequence from its victory if you guys haven't figured out right now by now i don't like the turk reich i got nothing against turks in general turkish people i don't you know if you're turkish you do we can be friends but uh, the the erdogan regime the turk reich yeah that, 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 I ain't got time for that. I, I got no patience for that. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is your daily lulls. Homer Simpson gets pulled over by British police. Well, well sort of. And I'm not going to go over my little, uh, the part that I wrote here, because I'm going to save that for tonight's show. I'm just going to cover this uh, briefly. This is going to be featured on tonight's show is Daily Tuesday with Bodhi Agora, which is featured on the Liberty Principle Facebook page, which is linked in the video descriptions. And if you're listening on audio, go to hisheadlines.com and you'll, you'll find the links. Uh, so this is from the Huffington Post. An unidentified driver in Milton Keynes, Southern England, presented a spoof Homer Simpson license to police during a traffic stop last Sunday night. And if you're watching the video, you can see the picture of the Homer, the Homers of the Simpsons right there. Go! Oh! So then this is from the, the, the Thames. Did you say Thames, Thames? I have never learned that. That's a name of the river there, or so I hear. Earlier this week, PC Phillips stopped a car in Milton Keynes. When she tried to identify the driver's ID, she found the below. The driver's car was seized and he was reported for driving with no insurance and driving without a proper license. And then they even added the, don't, dude, you seized the dude's car. You, 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 are you kidding me? And then you added dolt. You're dolts. You're dolts using dope. And you shouldn't. You should have left that dude alone. You, you freaking, you freaking arrested Homer Simpson. What the heck is your problem? In addition to the bogus Simpsons identity document, officers also discovered that the man was driving without insurance. <gasps> oh, the driver's car was seized, and he was reported for driving with no insurance and driving without a proper license. Dude, you didn't have your proper freedom licenses, dude. What do you expect? On TVP Roads Policing, they tweeted. This was presented as a driving license to us last night. Also had no insurance and therefore car seized and reported for both offenses. Yeah. Yeah, you guys, you suck. Can't believe you arrested Homer Simpson. You know, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know if Trump still has his finger on that uh, big old nuclear button, the one that's bigger than what Kim Jong-il does. Or Un had, it's Un now, right? It's not Il, it's Un. Uh, Il died, which... Kind of makes sense because he was ill, and now Un is in charge. So either way, I I'm I'm just assuming Donald. I give you my permission, 
they have arrested Homer Simpson. Commence, commence bombing. We begin bombing in five minutes. Nikon developing self-repairing 3D printer. Nikon is working on a 3D printer that can actually correct its own mistakes. A uh, patent was filed for the 3D printer recently that revealed the functional design of the new 3D printer. This is from 3dprint.com. Nikon files patent application for print repairing 3D printer. The recently published patent is for an apparatus for manufacturing a three-dimensional shaped object, and it includes a unique feature. It fixes its own mistakes. An inspecting unit would examine each layer of the print for holes or rough surfaces and would then take action to fill in the holes or to make sure the next layer adhered to the rough surfaces. This self-correcting mechanism would take care of some of the most common flaws in metal powder-based prints to deliver better quality overall. But again, I mean, it's, I, I like I'm covering the breakthrough. It's really cool, really interesting. But uh, just so you know, you know, I'm 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 not going to say I'm advocating for. He's advocating for. Um, but uh, I am predicting the, the if, if they're not already here, I am predicting the rise of the IP uh, open source pirates, the, the crusaders, uh, the, the crypto anarchists who will, who will go out there and, and you know, like, like states have, have spies stealing technology. That's what the crypto anarchists could theoretically be choosing to do which is to 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 steal the technology from the ip whores and co-opt that technology for open source folks and make sure that uh you don't you don't get to you don't get to hold on to your ill-gotten ip gains at least not the technology not the information scientists discover electrons that shift orbits so scientists from the Australian National University have been able to observe and document electrons that actually change the direction of their orbit. So it's it's been known theoretically that this was possible, but it was considered such a rare event that many believed it would not be possible to actually observe this shift take place until now. And this is from Zinhuant.com. That's spelled X-I-N-H-U-A-N-E-T.com. A team of international scientists, including Australians, oh, you just throw in the including Australians, I, I see how it is, have observed, a it's like, it's kind of like, I don't know, I don't know how to read that sentence. It's like, a team of international scientists, well, including Australians, I don't know how to read that, uh, have observed electrons outside of their regular orbit for the first time. The common image of an electron shows them orbiting a nucleus on a fixed path similar to planets, orbiting the sun, but scientists, including those from the Australian National University, again, there it is, but the scientists, including some of them freaking Australians, yeah, I gotta throw them in there, observe them in a different high-energy orbit. Anatoly Kefetz, the leader of ANU's involvement, said the findings were the result of work by hundreds of scientists after the phenomenon was first predicted by the quantum theory 30 years ago. Scientists never thought they could observe such a rare event, he said in a media release on Monday. There is simply, there is no simple way to look inside a molecule to see what an electron is doing there. So in order to make the discovery, the team took a precise snapshot of pairs of electrons in a hydrogen molecule. They used an X-ray beam to kick an electron out of the molecule, causing its atoms to split. I mean, duh, of course. Of course that's what they did. That makes sense. Uh, because of the two electrons in the molecule are entangled, the one that was knocked out carried very precise information about the quantum state of its counterpart. You guys understand all that, right? That makes sense. Drones you can fly with your mind alone. In Dubai, a drone company is displaying drones that can be flown with the power of the mind alone. You got to say it. I, I I should have like an echo effect there when I got to that park. With the power of the mind, 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 mind alone. alone, alone. The company is called Emotive. 
And this is from the national.ae. Mind control drones go on display at Dubai Forum. At this year's Global Education and Skills Forum in Dubai, Emotive are displaying their new lightweight plastic headset that can read the electrical impulses from the brain through the scalp, record them on a computer, and then configure the thought patterns into instructions for a small drone. This means that using brainwaves brainwaves alone, it is now possible to activate a drone and send it flying through the air. You imagine the drone taking off and it obeys. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that whoever wrote this article, maybe English is a second language. Anyway, it's it's really delightful. <laughs> uh, anyway, I don't have time to go more into it. I got to get to the last three stories here. And I got one minute Facebook battles EU over data privacy issues. Facebook is uh, under assault from both the EU and the U.S. about its handling of data from users. And the EU and the U.S. plan on using the the problems with Facebook actually using letting private data get in the hands of folks that shouldn't have it, they're going to use it to justify totally invading social media for their own coercive enterprise uh, competition protecting ends uh, instead of just allowing the market to fix itself. If Facebook wants to get your privacy information out there, somebody else can come along and do a better job than they do. Facebook unveils new subscriber model for video creators. I'm very excited about this. Facebook will allow video creators to offer subscription services there. And finally, IMF demands can you raise taxes to pay debt? That's right. IMF is demanding that the uh, Kenyans do stuff with their budget that will force them to raise taxes on their citizens. Yay, IMF! And they're... they're couldn't get to the details of those last two stories, and that's and that's okay. That is that is what it is. But it, I can't go on because I'm not absolutarian about a lot of things. But I am absolutarian about that twenty minutes. It's twenty minutes and twenty minutes only. So that's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. If you would like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for March 20th, 2018. Or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video. You can also go to istate.tv slash h044. And you can also find the 20 minutes of nothing but headlines audio podcast version. That's the version that doesn't have any of the intro or, or it doesn't have this part. If you're, if, if people were listening on audio, they don't hear this part. This is only available to YouTube and Facebook. Uh, and you can find us on iTunes and Stitcher by searching for iState. If you're watching on YouTube, you miss the opening of the show, and you'll also miss the very end, which you can only hear if you watch live on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon. Look for the guy with the AR-15, but don't be triggered. That AR-15 was lost long ago in a terrible, terrible, terrible voting accident. And finally, don't forget to join me tonight on Is Daily Tuesday with Bodhi Agora at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. And again, the page is linked in the video description. Tonight's show is titled humans are sluts and here's the proof but it's 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 more tasteful than it sounds trust me it's it's more tasteful than it sounds as always remember those who need to control thoughts need to control news so until tomorrow at 12 30 p.m eastern standard time this is paul gordon of istate.tv saying have a great rest of your day follow fellow istaters